Welcome to my channel, Simply Mama Cooks. I'm Angelica, and this is Vlogmas. By the way, be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Okay, here we go. It is the time of year where my family is requesting tamales. You guys are requesting tamales. I have had several requests for green chicken, uh, green chicken tamales, and that's what we're making today. I'm gonna make a small batch just for my family and I. Um, I'm not going crazy with the ratios here, but you definitely can like double, triple, quadruple um, the recipe. And for those of you that are gonna ask, I already know, I already know you guys. You're gonna be like, do you have beef tamales? Do you have the red tamales, the pork tamales? I do, I do, I do. I will link um, a playlist throughout this video somewhere or below in the description for recipe videos for all types of tamales. I've even done bean and cheese, um, just, yeah, all good stuff. But anyways, green chicken tamales. Chicken, green tamales. I don't know, call them what you want, they're gonna be good. Okay, so here I have five and a half pounds. It's a mix of boneless, skinless thighs and chicken breast. Um, I'm just gonna boil, I have like two large packs of chicken and I'm just going to, um, boil it, season it, um, and I will use some of the, the meat for another recipe. So I'm gonna season it uh, just with some chicken bouillon powder, salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder. Nothing too crazy because I wanna use it in another recipe. So here we go. I'm going in with some chicken bouillon powder, going in with some salt, some cracked black pepper going in, garlic powder, and I'm going with some dried minced onion into the mix because I have it. And I'm just gonna let that boil and do its thing. So my salsa is going to be a green tomatillo salsa. I have one large onion that I just chopped up into chunks. I have like four, five cloves of garlic. I left the skin on so it doesn't burn when it roasts. I'm adding two large jalapenos and this is right under a pound of tomatillos. Actually, it's like 325 grams. So it's not right under, it's 11 ounces of tomatillos. These are fresh tomatillos that have the husk, that papery husk that you rinse, take it off. Okay, so I know I have a lot of people in my comment section over the years that do not, do not like tomatillos. You just don't like the flavor. So you gotta ask yourself, you're not really looking for a substitute. You just don't like it. So if you wanna make a green salsa with just jalapeno, onion, and garlic, um, it's gonna be spicy. So if you want to kind of still get a green salsa that's on the medium to not so spicy side, then you'll want to maybe add two jalapenos, skip the tomatillos, add some fresh baby spinach leaves, uh, spring onion, um, and even zucchini. Those are things that are going to still give you the consistency of a green uh, salsa verde with uh, tomatillos, but without the tomatillo flavor. So it's not really a substitute for flavor, it's a substitute for the consistency. Uh, so there's that. There's my take on that. <laughs> so I'm going to roast um, my salsa ingredients in the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20, 25 minutes. All right, salsa, well, not salsa, but the roasted ingredients are definitely done. Ooh. Okay, so good stuff. I'm gonna let that hang out for a bit. Okay, so the chicken is done. I'm gonna shut it off. Okay, I'm gonna get some of this broth and strain it into my measuring cup here. Okay, so I am gonna peel my garlic and I'm gonna start, I'm, I'm gonna puree the salsa. By the way, I'm gonna remove the stem from the jalapeno carefully. And I'm not gonna to touch my eyes. <laughs> I'm going to flavor this with chicken bouillon powder. Just a teaspoon for now. And some salt, maybe a half teaspoon and I'll taste it once it's blended. I'm also going to add uh, just like, remember this also has salt and chicken bouillon, but I'm gonna add just a little, maybe a quarter cup to start. Uh, there we go. Mm. 
but for the most part, this is uh, how I make my salsa verde or the tomatillo salsa for the tamales. Okay, let's work on the masa. Here I have two and a half cups of masa harina. This is like the maseca brand. It's basically instant uh, corn flour for masa. It's not cornmeal, it's masa harina. To that, I'm going to add like a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna mix that. And I'm going real simple with this masa today. I'm gonna go in, this is about 115 grams of lard. You could use shortening if you like. And I'm just gonna sort of break that apart. And it's gonna melt with this warm broth. I'm gonna start with a cup. No, maybe, yeah. And it's gonna be messy and it's gonna take some time to get this masa going because you wanna saturate the masa because it's really dry. Broth, and this broth is seasoned with salt and chicken bouillon. If you want that extra chicken bouillon flavor, you can sub the salt with some extra chicken bouillon into your masa. Okay, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the lard because you also wanna make sure when you're mixing and whisking your masa that it doesn't get like too sticky. See how like I can press my hand on it and it's not really sticking that much? That's where you want your masa to be at. So I'm just gonna keep on mixing this, oops. And it's probably gonna take somewhere between two to two and a half cups of uh, broth for this. Okay, so for the corn husks, I separated these and rinsed them very well. Sometimes you get debris in there. And then I boiled them for an hour in hot water. Oops. I actually love the way the corn husks smell when they're boiled. It smells nice. Okay, so those are ready. So my chicken is shredded. This is about a pound and a half of cooked chicken. Here's the salsa. You can mix it with the chicken or you can just add the salsa as you make the tamales. I'm gonna just add it all into the chicken. I'm also going to just add a little bit of salt. I tasted the salsa and I felt like I needed more salt. Give it a mix. So my masa has been sitting for about 30 minutes. I just had it covered. Here is my filling. And you wanna make sure you wanna taste everything. Honestly, I kinda of taste my masa. I take a little pinch for salt and you sort of want it to be a little extra salty. The filling, I'll also taste it for salt and seasoning. Adjust to your preference. And my softened hojas or my corn husks. These are nice, soft and pliable. See how I can just kinda of crumble it up and it's not breaking, it's very pliable. So on your corn husk, there is a smooth side and rough side. This is the rough side, this is the smooth side. And sometimes you can just kind of rip off a piece to kind of make it, you know, the right palm size, a little overlapping from your palm. And with my masa, I find it just easy to press it with my hand. You could also spread with a spoon, a wooden spoon. But these days, I just do this with my hand. I know there's a lot of hacks for putting the, the masa into the tamal. You can do the tortilla press method. There's that little, you know, spreader, but this is where it's at for me, guys. So now I'm gonna take some of the chicken here, the filling, and just fill the center. I like meatier. I like a good filling to a thin masa ratio, but you know, that's up to you. That is up to you. I'm just going to fold it over just like that. And you kind of want to leave room from the top because it will kind of open up. And there you have it. My first tamal. You could also take some of the extra corn husk and tie it but this works because it's really pliable and it folds easy. So I'm just gonna place it over here onto my baking sheet and repeat the process.
Okay, so these are done. How many did we make? Let's see. Okay. Two dozen, a little over two dozen. Um, 26, 27 tamales, which is perfect because I did not want a lot. This is just for our dinner and maybe some leftovers. So, okay, now it's time to put them in my steamer pot. And I filled the bottom with water. It's about two liters of water. Um, that should do the trick to cook these. Now I'm going to use this little stone bowl. I'm gonna flip it upside down like that. And now I'm just going to stack these around the bowl upright. Okay, last one. Let's tuck it in here. Here, we'll put it there. All the leftover leaves, I'm just going to use that to cover. Just kind of do that. There we go. Cover with a lid. I'm going to turn, crank up the heat to high. Okay, so I have the pot on high. Once I hear it boil and simmer, I'm going to lower it to a medium heat setting and let it cook for at least an hour to an hour and 15 minutes before you check. Um, cook time does vary. I always say this, depending how tightly you pack the pot will determine how long it takes. For example, if you pack it tightly, the cook time could possibly double. It just depends. That's why I always say cook time varies, but I'll show you what I do to, to test, to show you how, you know, how you want the tamales to be when they're done. And I am working with a 16 quart pot, by the way, and that was perfect for this amount. Let's see here. It has been like an hour. Here we go. All right. When it's done, it'll slide out of the corn husk easily without sticking. So let's see, yeah. No, this one's not done. Well, it's almost. So yeah, I think another 20, 30 minutes and these will be done. It's been another like 20 minutes or so and they're done. But I'm gonna show you what the done cooked through tamales do when you take it out of the husk. See how it easily removes from the husk? That's when you know they're done. A little bit of crema. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> and you could also add extra salsa, make extra salsa, but this is just seasoned and flavored so well. You wanna make sure you season to taste. And these are uh, the salsa verde green chili chicken tamales. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.